Good morning, everyone. The Lord be with you. And also with you. It's going to be a sunny day. Is this our spring break, I guess, or our winter break, whatever you call it? Looks good. Our, our lessons this morning, we have a plethora of things that we could talk about. I was just kind of blown away by all the different subjects that in those three pericopes. And so I thought uh, just something that we kind of glanced on last week in the epistle and something Paul hits this week. And I thought, I don't think I preach on that very much, so I'll do that today. Um, so we'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, our birthdays this week, we have two, Mark Schaefer and, and Brody Pelton, and we wish them a happy birthday. And, and uh, Girl Scout cookies, um, uh, I see they're all over the Walmarts and the stores now. So you can order from church here online for some of our scouts. And uh, uh, actually, Andy, it looks like most of this is yours. So. Well, we, won't, we, we won't read everything, but... Uh, uh, Today was the day I wanted to know about uh, people who are able to play kickball. The tournament itself takes place on March 25th, but there's a sign-up sheet. Uh, next week is our senior youth, uh, the gathering attendees meeting. So that will take place after the second service. And then also, um, I was going to start uh, next week, but they sent me the forms already. So if you're interested in... Uh, in uh, ordering uh, butter braids, there's a sign-up sheet on the senior youth board, and then they'll be delivered on April 11th. So by that time, you should mostly be done with your Girl Scout cookies. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe for another sugar. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I think, uh, other than that, uh, just take a opportunity to read everything. One thing that I thought was kind of on the 50th anniversary one. Um, so there's a few books of the Bible where it just reads off where like they're building the tabernacle and the temple and it's like all just this like information. So that's kind of how the top half is. And then that meeting ends and I'm not sure who wrote it, if it was a meeting or um, uh, just the person's kind of personal notes. But uh, the last half I thought was kind of interesting and my favorite line is uh, everyone seems excited about the future of eternal hope. And that is you guys that they're writing about so long ago. So I thought that was kind of uh, a uh, interesting uh, look into what they were thinking back then. So other than that, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you know, experts say that uh, churches, the church life of a church congregation now is only about forty years. So we're celebrating fifty. That's a good thing, I think. And. Uh, We've got lots to look forward to and, and, and be praying and see where God is leading you and what maybe God is leading this congregation as we look to the future. And, and uh, one thing about it, black and white, dark and light is getting clearer and clearer all the time. And so we can see God leading us in ways, a lot of times away from what the world is doing. So, well, he always is actually. We just don't see it, I guess. So. But be, keep that in prayer as we look forward to celebrating that anniversary. And uh, why don't we begin our service with our first hymn.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. <coughs> our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death, of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the Word, announce the grace of God unto all of you, and in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. of all who put their trust in you, mercifully grant that by your power we may be defended against all adversity. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The Old Testament reading for the seventh Sunday after the Epiphany is from the 45th chapter of Genesis. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him, for they were dismayed at his presence. So Joseph said to his brothers, Come near to me, please. And they came near, and he said, I am your brother, Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here, for God sent me before you to preserve life. 
For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there are yet five years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. And God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth, and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me a father to Pharaoh, and lord of all his house, and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Hurry and go up to my father and say to him, Thus says your son Joseph, God has made me lord of all Egypt. Come down to me. Do not tarry. You shall dwell in the land of Goshen, and you shall be near me, you and your children and your children's children, and your flocks, your herds, and all that you have. There I will provide for you, for there are yet five years of famine to come, so that you and your household and all that you have do not come to poverty. And now your eyes see, and the eyes of my brother Benjamin see, that it is my mouth that speaks to you. You must tell my father of all my honor in Egypt, and of all that you have seen. Hurry, and bring my father down here. Then he fell upon his brother Benjamin's neck and wept, and Benjamin wept upon his neck, and he kissed all his brothers and wept upon them. After that, his brothers talked with him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our psalm of the day comes from Psalm 103, and we will read this uh, as uh, between men and women in the congregation, uh, according to how it's put here. We begin. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases. Who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with his steadfast love and mercy. Who satisfies you with goodness, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the people of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abiding in steadfast love. He will not always chide, nor will he keep his anger forever. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his steadfast love toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our transgressions from us. As the Father shows compassion to his children, so the Lord shows compassion to those who fear him. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now, and it will be forever. Amen. Our epistle lesson for this morning is from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. For as by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. But each in his own order, Christ the firstfruits, then at his coming those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he delivers the kingdom to God the Father after destroying every rule and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy, enemy to be destroyed is death. Why am I in danger every hour? I protest, brothers, by my pride in you, which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord. I die every day. What do I gain if... Humanly speaking, I fought with beasts at Ephesus, if the dead are not raised. Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. Do not be deceived. Bad company ruins good morals. Wake up from your drunken stupor, as is right, and do not go on sinning, for some have no knowledge of God. I say this to your shame. But someone will ask, how are the dead raised? What kind of body do they, do they come? You foolish person, what you sow does not come to life unless it dies. And what you sow is not the body that is to be, but a bare kernel, perhaps of wheat or of some other grain. 
But God gives it a body as he has chosen, and to each kind of seed its own body. For not all flesh is the same, but there is one kind for humans, another for animals, another for birds, and another for fish. There are heavenly bodies and earthly bodies, but the glory of the heavenly is of one kind, and the glory of the earthly is of another. There is one glory of the sun, and another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars. For stars differ from star in glory. So it is with the resurrection of the dead. What is sown is perishable. What is raised is imperishable. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise. Praise the Lord, all nations. Extol him, all peoples. For great is his steadfast love toward us. <coughs> and the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Alleluia. Be merciful, even as your Father is merciful. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the sixth chapter. Jesus said, But I say to you who hear, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. To one who strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also, and from one who takes away your cloak, do not withhold your tunic either. Give to everyone who begs from you, and from one who takes away your goods, do not demand them back. And as you wish that others would do to you, do so to them. If you love those who love you, what benefit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what benefit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. And if you lend to those from whom you expect to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to get back the same amount. But love your enemies and do good and lend, expecting nothing in return. And your reward will be great, and you will be sons of the Most High, for he is kind to the ungrateful and the evil. Be merciful, even as your Father is merciful. Judge not, not, and you will not be judged. Condemn not, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. <coughs> Creed is focused on the Holy Spirit and the ways in which the work of the Spirit intersects with our lives. In very few words, the Creed encompasses what really is important in our spiritual lives now and forever. So we confess. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. What does this mean? I believe that I cannot, by my own reason or strength, believe in Jesus Christ my Lord, or come to him. But the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel, and lightened me with his gifts, sanctified and kept in me in true faith. In the same way he calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth, and keeps it with Jesus Christ in the one true faith. In this Christian church, he daily and richly forgives all my sins and the sins of all believers. On the last day, he will raise me and all the dead and give eternal life to me and all believers in Christ. This is most certainly true. You may be seated.
the name of the one true God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. Have you ever been confronted with a preschooler who asks a lot of questions? Young children know how to ask questions, don't they? They can be very simple. The answers can be very elusive and sometimes very profound questions that they ask. And they're almost always a why question, it seems like. But, you know, then again, we do too ask the same type of questions, don't we? To, to satisfy our curiosity or even our doubt about something. We want to know and so we ask. And, and I think that's a good thing. Sometimes we ask questions so that we can know if things are really as they seem to be. And when it comes to subjects like death, even Christians can have plenty of questions. It's, it's something that our society wants to cover up and not talk about. It used to be very commonplace in the world, especially when we were more agricultural. Life and death, it was a part of living. And yet now it's all hidden away in hospitals so we can't see it or in a hospice care center where it looks as good as it possibly can. Paul mentions death in our epistle last weekend, this week, and, and so I thought, you know, I don't preach on this very much, so maybe today's a good day to start. King Louis the, the 15th of France was petrified of death and even its subject, and so he ordered that no one in France should speak about death in his presence. He wanted desperately to avoid any physical, visible sign or symbol or place that would remind him of what was to come in this world. Yet he could never escape it. I mean, how foolish was he, especially back then, that he thought he could get away from this, the last great enemy. He could have escaped it any more than an ostrich can escape its enemy by sticking its hole in the sand, its head in the sand. Yet that seems to be what King Louis did. You see, the reality of death is, is difficult to deny or ignore. God and Holy Scriptures doesn't deny it. He doesn't cover it up or sugarcoat it like we try to do today in society. You see, brothers and sisters, the truth is all of us are going to die because we are all sinners. Every human body will undergo decay in the grave. And But the good news is that, that death sting, the curse and the punishment of dying, has been removed through our Savior, Jesus Christ. We have nothing to fear, nothing to worry about. Because Jesus shed his holy, innocent blood for us, God has forever canceled the debt of sin that is due us and, and has given us a free gift of grace, the forgiveness of, for all our sins, for Christ's sake. And by his resurrection from the dead, Jesus defeated sin. He defeated the devil. He defeated hell and death. You see, death has lost its sting. There's nothing for believers to worry about. The grave for the Christian becomes the gate to eternal life. I guess you could say it becomes our graduation point when we finally move on to what God has promised us. Everyone that has died and is in the grave, whether they're believers or unbelievers, will come back to life on the last day. Everyone will rise. Yet those of us who are believers will join our Savior and all the faithful in heaven. There's nothing for us to fear. And actually there's not a judgment day for believers. For Christ has taken our judgment upon himself on the cross. If you don't believe in Jesus or if you deny him or laugh or mock him, then you have something to fear, but not believers. We will join our Savior and all our brothers and sisters in heaven. Unbelievers, well, they'll be consigned to everlasting shame and contempt in hell. There will be a final resurrection, brothers and sisters. We can't hide from what is to come. Yet, just as new life springs forth after a long, bleak winter, and I was thinking that again as I backed out of my driveway this morning and started driving, oh man, we've got eight more weeks of this, but at least today is warm, so that's good. But even, even as life springs forth after a life winter, so long winter, so also life springs forth for the Christian every day as we live in baptismal grace and we look forward to our own resurrection transformation on that day that Jesus calls us home. Thankfully, the Word of God promises and assures us of our own resurrection when this old rotten life is over. When death occurs, a person is buried, 
were planted like a seed in a, in a garden, only we call it the graveyard, and our bodies await the new life that will be a burst forth in the resurrection. You see, brothers and sisters, Jesus is the resurrection and the life from which our own resurrection and life will flow. The great deed of salvation has been done by Christ, and it cannot be undone. The risen Christ is now the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. So I guess that leads us to a good Lutheran question, and Paul asked it in his epistle, what will our new resurrection bodies be like? What does this mean? You see, the resurrection body that we will have from what we can tell, it's a lot just like this one. Look at Jesus after the resurrection. He still had a body. He still ate fish with the disciples. Looked just alike. They could tell who he was. It'll be just the same. And yet our new bodies will be radically different all at the same time. And isn't that how God does stuff for us? There's the now and the not yet, always combined together. He always does us one better. You see, the Lord who created our physical bodies will give us spiritual bodies. Our bodies in their present state or condition will be changed in a flash, in the twinkling of an eye. No longer full of lust, no longer full of sin, no longer limited by hunger or thirst or pain or mortality. But we will have real bodies that are free from sin and all the debilitating effects that come from living on this sin-filled planet. Can you imagine what that's going to be like in our new bodies and, and how we will experience God's grace? Just imagine closing your eyes and then stepping onto the shore and finding that you're in heaven. Taking hold of a hand as you get there and finding out that it's Jesus' own hand as he welcomes you home. Breathing new air and finding it no longer this earthly, polluted air, but celestial air, pure and heavenly feeling invigorated and finding out that that's what immortality feels like, never tired or weary again, passing from storm and tempest to an unbroken calm and a peace like you've never known before, waking up and finding that you're home finally. You see, as surely as this winter will yield to springtime, so we, who are God's grain, planted in the field of this world, are sown only to rise again at the coming of our Savior, because Jesus lived, died, and rose again from the dead for us. And even though the fear of death may cause some people to try to hide from death or deny it or ignore it, it doesn't matter, because Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live, even though he dies. And so we can place our hands in Christ's nail-scarred palm, and we can face death with peace and confidence, and even, I think, joy and excitement at what is yet to come. As baptized believers, we live in Jesus, and even now we have a foretaste of the eternal life that is to come. The short winter of our lives is almost over. By God's grace in Christ, we are ready for the spring of resurrection. Maranatha. Come quickly, Lord Jesus. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. It is now time for the morning offering as we give back to the Lord a little of what he's given to us.
We rise as we go to the Lord in prayer. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. O Lord, your servant Joseph endured hardship and struggle, yet believed it would come to good. Give us such tested faith and bring all things to completion according to your purpose in Christ, the new Adam, who has brought hope to the world. <coughs> Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Help all parents who have, been brought, who have brought their children to Christ in the waters of holy baptism. Also bring them to him faithfully in the divine service, so that he may continue to take them in his arms and bless them through his word. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Let your love have its way with us, Lord. Lead us to expect no self-interested -interest, reward, but to love our enemies and serve those in need. Put an end to all bitterness and strife. Let forgiveness reign between each of us, even as Christ's blood covers our sins before your heavenly throne. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. uphold civil authority and those responsible to you for the welfare of our nation, state, and community. Help them steadfastly to pursue the cause of justice and protect life from beginning to natural end. Guard all first responders and protect those who defend us here or abroad. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort all who suffer, deliver the sick according to your will, and sustain by your grace those troubled in body or soul. Especially, Lord, we lift up to you now all those who remain before you in our hearts. Give your comfort to those who grieve. Grant your children patience and courage to endure every time of trial with hope in Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We give thanks for the gift of this blessed sacrament, O Lord. Give us a right heart as we prepare to eat and drink Christ's true body and blood, that by it we would be equipped to love you above all and our neighbors as ourselves. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, you will bring all things to completion according to your order and time. When Christ comes and all the dead are raised, number us, we pray, among the saints in glory, clothing the perishable with the imperishable, and bringing us into eternal life. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you Lord our God for you have had mercy on us and sent your only begotten Son to be our Savior grant us the gift of your spirit that we may receive your blessings with thankfulness for the forgiveness purchased for us by our Savior on the cross of Calvary grant that we receive the body and blood of our Lord as the guarantee of our salvation and as a foretaste of the feast to come in your eternal kingdom to you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and praise, together with the Son and the Holy Spirit, now and forever.
our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Savior Jesus Christ, shed for the forgiveness of all your sins. And now may the body and blood of our Lord strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in his peace. Thank you. 
to the Lord for he is good. Amen. 